I wish there was a little bit more of a like a a transition from the end of that thirty second thing to <clears throat> the podcast, like the other one has. Yeah, but, I wish you had like ten seconds after it hit zero to really throw us time. off. I agree. Give me some time. Uh, Illini basketball podcast episode one fifty three, March eighth, twenty twenty three. It is the postseason officially. Uh, I am on time, perfectly on time, actually. Some would say early, um, but that's because I want to get this over with because I don't want to talk about the Purdue game that much, <laughs> uh, for being honest here, because like it's been three days. Knew they were going to lose. It was a very Illinois game. And it was definitely an Illinois game. When they tied it late, they absolutely did nothing to try to actually win it. Yeah, um, I mean, I was pretty much laying on the couch the whole time. I didn't even watch the first four minutes of the second half because I was watching the end of some other Big Ten game. What other game? Maryland uh, Northwestern or Maryland Penn State. Yeah, yeah. Um, So it came back at 16 minutes. Uh, They were still down 20-something. And then uh, Terrence Shannon came over and I think blocked that ball on ED, and I finally got out of my seat. but yeah, Illinois still loses. So, <laughs> what's new? What's new? Um, let's just get into the players of the game. Here we go. Uh, I, I went with Luke Goody. I put him back up uh, because he was my player of the game. So, got him in the background here. Uh, 16 minutes, four of six from the field, two of two from three. One of those threes was super late in the game. Didn't really matter, but still, it, it looked pure. 11 points, three rebounds, one steal, one block, one turnover. Um, Luke is, just, I mean, he just hustled his ass off, um, which it's nice to have another guy that does that. There, there's guys on this team that sometimes you you wonder how bad they want to be there. Luke Goody wants to be there. He wants to lead this team. Um, down the stretch, I think there's 56 seconds left. Illinois was down two. They, they go to review the play. Brad uses his last timeout. They call a play. Coleman Hawkins brings it up the wrong side of the court. Luke Goody's sitting there telling him to go to the other side of the court. Coleman's waving him off, waving everybody around. Uh, they end up giving the ball to Terrence Shannon. He probably got fouled that didn't get called. It is what it is. Um, and they and they don't even go two for one, which is killer. But, but you could see Goody trying to get that play right. Um, he, of course, didn't didn't get it, get what he wanted. Um but uh, Underwood was asked about him, having him back, and he said, shooter, shooter, shooter. Uh, he's tough as heck. He dives on the floor for loose balls. He never misses an assignment. Today is how I envisioned Luke all year, except when he was in a boot, I guess. Um, he does everything right and everything to help his team win. So, uh, yeah, really, really liked what Luke did, what he showed in this game. It's kind of been the first game where it seems like Luke Goody's back. So. Travis, sure. what's going on, man? Sure. Why do you always do that to me? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I went with uh, Sincere Harris, and I think one of the biggest sure. reasons why, yep, and one of the biggest reasons why is the uh, the sequence with Ty Rogers where they steal mm-hmm. it from Smith and then uh, Sincere to Ty to Sincere and one layup. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Uh, shot the ball pretty well. 21 minutes, five of eight from the field, one of three from three, 10 points, three rebounds, one assist, one block, one turnover. Good game. Yeah. Um, got up and stopped that alley oop. It looked like he jumped 15 feet in the air on that one. Um, yeah, Sincere was was really good. The, the, those freshmen, that sequence of those freshmen shows you if they stay, what this team can do later on. Um, Terrence Shannon, 33 minutes, four of seven, two of three from three. Three for three from the line, 13 points, one rebound, two assists, one block, six turnovers for Terrence. Um, you kind of saw that Terrence is not a point guard, so please don't let him bring the ball up anymore, Brad. Uh, he, I think that he probably got fouled on a, on two of those turnovers. Uh, one of them, Newman kicked the ball blatantly, didn't get called. Um, but <clears throat> even on that one, he, he should have gave it to Rodgers. Rodgers had Edie guarding him or whoever was in, they didn't guard Rogers past the free throw line. He should have brought the ball up the court every time. He, he's supposed to be the stand-in point guard right now. So um, Matthew Meyer, 32 minutes, 5 of 14, uh, nice solid 1 of 10 from 3. 
Uh, it's five of seven from line, 16.6 rebounds, one assist, two steals, two turnovers. Uh, there, there are points in the game where I wish that Illinois would have went away from him ISO ball three, but it is what it is. So, uh, Quackle, what's going on, man? How are you doing? Ethan, you all right, bud? I know. Yeah, I just think we've already taken too long, huh? This game, yeah, I'm just. I've, I'm used to Illinois finishing the season well on this podcast, and uh-huh. this is just not what I envisioned. Um, but I think it kind of shows us that Purdue is a fraud when it comes to making your – I think people are going to pick them to go way too far in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, Purdue's – like, they, they've they struggled in the second half in games. It, they don't and, check the boxes for a national championship team. I don't really think anybody yeah. in the Big Ten really does, except I think – Indiana does check the boxes, but that doesn't mean that that's going to happen. I think Illinois checks the boxes more than almost anybody in the conference just because nobody in the conference really does. And those boxes are, of course, you know, an NBA player, point guard, which is a perimeter, a perimeter <laughs> pro. These are these are well known. Ant Wright, Mark Titus, all those guys know these these boxes here. Um, and then you need a point guard that is a smaller point guard, like like uh, Tyson Walker type, you need that type of point guard in your uh, in your lineup. But that's the one part of Illinois where they really don't have that. Uh, but Purdue doesn't have it. Purdue doesn't have anything that's resembling a perimeter pro at all, not even close. Like they're good college players, and they're but they're freshmen. And sometimes the lights are too bright, a.k.a. when you sick uh, Ty Rogers and Sincere Harris on them in the full court. Yeah. Lights get a little bright. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that pressure – uh, maybe should have used that a little bit earlier, but um, it is what it is. Quackle says, I'm going to the Big Ten tourney on Saturday. Any chance I see our Illini? <clears throat> well, I went last year and didn't see him after Friday, so good luck. I'll give it a 31% chance. Yeah. Depends if they win tomorrow, according to Ethan. So, uh, Coleman Hawkins, 29 minutes, two of five from the field, uh, one of three from three. Is that right? Sure. One of three, yeah. Um, one for four from the line that hurts six points, four rebounds, six assists, one steal, two blocks, one turnover. Uh, he got two fouls early in the second half or first half went to the bench. Brad sat him said, I don't trust him. He ended up with two fouls in the game. Both the fouls seemed a little ticky tacky to me. Um, but it is what it is. Underwood said, quote, in hindsight, I should have played him. Find me the last time Zach Eady was minus 10 on the court. He said Coleman was plus 12. So Something to think about. Um, then I text you. The, all the announcers did were, was talk about how Eady had two fouls and he was on the bench, but they didn't say a word about Coleman Hawkins. Uh, and you shared this on the Illini Basketball Podcast. In Big Ten play, Coleman Hawkins is plus 95. Something so, to think about. Something to think about. Uh, really, it's really impressive. Epps plus 64, Shannon plus 50, Meyer plus 38, Harris plus 35, Rogers plus 29. I think we know who should start. Uh, Goody minus six, Danger minus 15, guy that doesn't play anymore, minus 32. Melendez Sky minus Clark, 33. Minus 32. Melendez minus 33. Sky was also a part of the three games where they mm. lost all three in Maryland. And then they got beat by 15 against Penn State. And then they got beat by, what, 13 against Northwestern. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zach says, please discuss Matthew Meyer's appearance on the Inquirer if you watched. Never seen a guy give out his own scouting report. I mean, his scouting, he was asked about ISO ball. And basically he said, he goes, I'm either going to juke you right or juke you left. And I only shoot threes. He, he said that his only purpose is to shoot threes in ISO ball. So, which I don't know if that's entirely true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's why you say unless, unless something happens, but that's, that's pretty much what he wants to do. Um, which I'm not, I mean, one of 10, please stop. I don't know. Uh, unknown. Un, no, you, you know who the hell I are says, <laughs> dang, bro. Use a space. All I'm going to say is if we don't double pick it on the pass instead of letting him dribble, then double, <clears throat> we're in trouble. I agree. There's got to be. You got to double pick it. There's got to be a different they gotta game, have plan. A game plan. They got to have a game plan. Yeah, they definitely have to have a different game plan. Well, they had a different one for Indiana the second time, and that, you know, 
worked out. They didn't win, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Melendez 28 minutes, one of five from the field. zero for one from three, five of six from the line. How do you only, I don't know what I put down here. Uh, two assists, two steals, two blocks, one turnover. How many points did he have? I had just have a four Seven. there, but that's Seven. impossible. It's impossible to just have four points. <laughs> Must be four rebounds. I, I, I was doing this last night when me and Ethan were on this thing called playback TV. We'll talk about it later, but uh, quick I, plug there. Go check it out um, I, while we're talking and we'll tell you how to sign up for it. I don't understand why RJ Melendez is starting. Like, I don't get it at all. And I don't understand. I don't, I don't know either. Why? Uh, let me also hear that. Why the hell is Dane Danger still starting? This lineup is like. Brad- I, would you like to see Goody, Goody Rogers, maybe instead? I'm okay with any combination that isn't those two. <laughs> okay. I mean, I assume that, you know. Dane is going to continue to start. This is like a November lineup trying to figure out the team. Like it's it, Dane Danger is not good. Let's yeah. be honest. RJ has been super inconsistent. He's not a starter, that's for sure. And then when, I, when I just, you say Dane understand. Danger isn't good, are you talking about his defense or are you talking about his game overall? Because he was three of four this game. He had seven points, two re- two rebounds is brutal. Um, two rebounds for him and one rebound for Terrence Shannon is not good for this team. They don't know how to get him the ball. He's not a good defender. Yeah, I, I feel like Brad needs to stop running. He's got to stop running um, the spread offense when Dane's in. He's got to run a different offense. So that's that's what I feel. Dane played 17 minutes for the second game in a row, I believe. He got four fouls, and you didn't see him again. Last game, he got three fouls. You didn't see him again. He's played 41 minutes in the last three games, 56 minutes in the last four games. <clears throat> uh, McKenzie says, 100% agree Dane shouldn't start. He's a defensive liability. Rodgers should be starting. That's that's my problem with Dane is his defense. Um, he, he, do, he never steps out on guys, and not only does he not step out, we talked about this, he doesn't rebound when he doesn't stop, step out. So if you're not going to step out and contest a shot, at least get a dang rebound. Um, Ty Rogers, 22 minutes, 0 for 1, 1 for 2 from the line, 1 point, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, 2 turnovers. Um, Ty was good. He he had an ED garden in most of the second half, so he was, he was a screener for Illinois. And he, he does his job. That's what he does. So uh, he, of course, you can't go at the basket when you got Zach Eady guarding you. So wasn't an offensive threat, but man, if he could learn to shoot threes, it would have been nice. I did like sincere shooting the three to make him honest. And then he missed his second, his next two, but at least he tried to make him honest. Uh, Brandon Lieb, uh, same stats as the Michigan game, two minutes, nothing else. So uh, really good. Yeah, um, yeah, we're uh, look at this. We're gonna be under 20 minutes. Here we go. Thank other, God. Other notes and quotes. Uh, it was 26 47 in the first half, and then Illinois outscored him 45 29 in the second half. Of course, couldn't uh, couldn't get anything going when it mattered, which is kind of concerning to be honest with you. Uh, 15 turnovers against Purdue, who doesn't really turn a team over. Of course, Terrence Shannon had six of those because he was trying to cross over a guy that just likes to stick his hands in there. So um, Underwood in the post game, uh, I got three things here. I told you I wasn't even going to do any, but I got three. They're short. Uh, Underwood said, it's been our inability to execute on offense. The offensive side early has been problematic. We just haven't been good enough. You can't just play one pass and dribble drive against against teams in the Big Ten. Today we missed Jaden. That's no excuse. We have to do a better job. I have to do a better job. That's right. That's right. Underwood also said, uh, we never settled down. First play of the game, we have ran 100 times. We still haven't run it yet. You realize I am sitting on my ass at a press conference, and we still haven't run the first play of the game yet. We can't let a little ball pressure bother us. First half is all me. I don't have the guys this these guys prepared. This guys. He, say, he says it all the time. Why does he say that all the time? Don't have the guys prepared. Um, yeah, I it. He even said uh, today or yesterday that he that they still haven't ran the first play of the Purdue game, 
Well, you can't do it anymore, Brad. Let's move on, buddy. Um, best, best one of the night. Here we go. I think we are playing our best basketball. I really think we have proven we can play in, with anybody in this tournament. I know this. I wouldn't want to play us. Thoughts? Just so we're clear, Would you folks. Want to play Illinois? Yes. Just so we're clear, folks. Since mid February, this team is three and four, with a loss by twelve, a loss by three, a loss by twelve, a loss by five, a win by nine over the worst team in the conference, a win by four, and a double overtime win by four. I think their best basketball was probably played in the first seven games of the season, I would say. And yeah. they haven't really even found a level since. I mean, you could say that when they won seven of eight, sure, that's probably their actual best basketball relative to what this team is now because November is so long ago in the season and the team is completely different. Uh, but, yeah, they haven't really played very well. I mean, let's be honest. They've lost, like I said, three – Three and four in their last seven, and four and five in their last nine. So they just say that I don't the, know. I think the biggest they just haven't played a full. I mean, Zach Eady sat for twelve minutes in the first half, and you let Purdue put up forty seven against you. If you would if you would have told me Zach Eady's going to score seventeen points and get six rebounds, I would have said Illinois wins by fifteen. But they didn't. Yep. They let Newman get nineteen. They let Brandon Smith get fifteen. Who? Braden Smith, what's his name? Brendan? No. I don't know. Why do they name these kids things like Brandon? What's his name? Braden. Jeez. Braden. See? Why don't you just name him Brandon like a normal person? Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> From a person that has a kid named Taven. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah. Let Newman get 19. Uh, Smith literally is on the baseline. And this is probably the biggest thing that drove me nuts is I think – Dane was in at this time and he literally leaves the guy that's three feet from the basket and moves out to guard whoever was in at that time. And then Smith just has a little three foot shot because I think RJ was coming down the side or was, was holding them there. So I don't know. They just, you got to put a game together. You can't, you can't have this type of game in the tournament. Or yep. you're going home. What are your thoughts of the fact that Illinois might only have two games left this year? It's starting, I it's starting to weigh on me. I I am hoping for the best, folks. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's uh, crypto says, Sup fellas just got here. I guess we just cross our fingers in the postseason. Yep. That's what we're gonna do. So there's some Purdue. Uh look at that. If they get minutes, if they welcome. get to the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament, do they get a seven seed? I don't know because aren't they? A lot of people have them like the last eight seed right now. If they get to the Big Ten championship, do they get a, a seven seed? Yes. If they win the Big Ten tournament, do they get a seven seed? Yes. It's the same question. No shot to get to six. I don't think. No hell. Unless no. unless they just stomp on Indiana and Purdue on the way there. There's no way this team can win four games in four days. <laughs> I agree. I mean, that's it. I don't Brad, even think they could win. Brad was still game talking about the Indiana game off on off 19 days in a row, like, or whatever that was. Yeah. Depends on what Iowa, Michigan State, et cetera, do for a seven. It's true. I mean, if, I, if they lose their first round and Illinois wins – do any flip flop in there? Michigan State is one hundred percent getting to the Sweet Sixteen. I don't care what seed they are. Just so we're clear on that, that's the team that I trust the most in the Big Ten. So, all right, on to the Big yeah. Ten tournament or whatever you have written. Next. Well, you know, I, I <laughs> thought we'd talk about the Big Ten tournament for a minute. Uh, it starts sure. tonight, uh, Wednesday, uh, March eighth, with Ohio State, Wisconsin, and. Nebraska, Minnesota, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great basketball games tonight on the docket. Well, like I said to you uh, before we got on, oh, uh, that I think these results are pretty obvious. Is Ohio State the favorite? They should be if they're not. <laughs> we both picked them to be the upset game. Just so you know. Let's see. Let's give it a look here. <laughs> uh, according to the ESPN app, 
It is Ohio State minus two. Yep. Yeah, Wisconsin, I don't know what the number is. Wisconsin has won like two games in three months or two months or something. They're not good. Not a good basketball club. I agree. And they're still on the bubble. Wisconsin has won uh, one, two, three, four. Let's just put it this way. They started 11, two, 11 and 2, and now they're 17 and 13. So that's 6 and 11. So essentially they're 5 and 11 in the new year. So, or 7 and 11 in the new year, whatever. Same thing. Uh, they stink. Let's be honest. Uh, so I think Ohio State beats them. There you go. Bracket for you. So this will this will help me out here a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I think you have Ohio State will beat Wisconsin. So that sets up Ohio State Iowa. Mm-hmm. And let me know when you disagree. Okay. Uh, Nebraska dusts Minnesota probably like seventy four fifty two or something. Tomonaga has twenty six on like ten three. No, that doesn't that math doesn't check out six threes. <laughs> uh, so yeah. then tomorrow you would have Rutgers Michigan. I'll take Michigan. Rutgers is really you're gonna take Michigan. I'm shocked. Rutgers is not. Who do you got winning the Big Ten tournament? Michigan, yeah. <laughs> um weird that we both pick teams that have to win four games in four days. <laughs> right. <laughs> Interesting. Uh and then Ohio State, Iowa. I think uh, I think Ohio State makes a little rough. I think they got some yeah. confidence I think, in them. I think they get a couple. Yeah. yeah. Uh We'll save the Penn State Illinois for later, but yep. We'll for the for the sake of this, we'll say Penn State wins just for the sake of this. Um, and then you'd have Nebraska Maryland. I'm very worried about Maryland's results away from home, and yeah. I know you picked them to win, but yeah, I, I think Nebraska gives them a scare. I think Maryland wins this game by like two. I honestly, I didn't pick them for any particular reason. I just was trying to do something different. <clears throat> yeah, so. well. Sometimes different uh, wins, you know, sure. Northern Kentucky. There you go. I'll say Michigan beats Purdue um, just because it's, it's probably going to happen. I'm not thinking so. off of the fact that I picked Michigan, though, but I'll take Michigan to beat Purdue. Uh, I will take Michigan State to beat Ohio State. So everyone will be like, is Ohio State going to do it? And then Michigan State's going to be like, no, they're not. Um, I will run chalk here, aren't you? I will take Penn State to beat Northwestern. Okay. I will take Indiana to beat Maryland. And then that would set up what Michigan, Michigan State, and then Penn State, Indiana. I'll take Indiana over Penn State. And I will take just because I don't think Izzo really cares about this. Yeah. Izzo probably wants some rest. So I'll take Michigan. Then you got Michigan, Indiana, and I'll take Indiana. But then I'll take Michigan also. So there you go. I'll take them both. Yeah. I mean, if if I was looking at it like if I didn't want to be, you know, crazy. Hey, I picked Maryland. Um, I'd say I would pick Indiana to win this. If I'm being 100%. And then everyone's going to ride Indiana into the tournament like they did with Iowa last year. And then Indiana's going to lose to a 12 get, seed. Yep. I agree. So that would effectively end the Big Ten's chances of winning anything this year if Indiana lost in the first round. So, Quackle, to answer your question, 0% chance of you seeing Illinois on Saturday <laughs> and Friday. 0% chance Friday. <laughs> Uh, and Brad says, I hope we don't lose to the portal and maybe get somebody back we weren't expecting. Not that I have lost hope for this year or anything. Yeah, I mean, that's we're not going to know what Illinois looks like next year until they they throw it up in November, September. When do they start? November. Yeah, they're going to lose Sky Clark to the portal. I think that's almost a guarantee. <clears throat> yeah. And he can go try to win more than four games at Louisville. Have a good time. Yeah. Uh, I would think. Do you think? Do you think Louisville wins? Do you think Louisville goes two and twenty nine or two and two and th- what were they four and twenty eight? You think they go two and thirty if they're in the Big East? Uh, I don't know. Yes, no. Something to think about. Something to think about. Yes. Anyway. Uh, yeah, see you later, Sky Clark. Uh, have a good time. Uh, wow. So, yeah, technically on the other show, you pick Maryland, I pick Michigan, but for the purposes of this, Indiana, why not? Yeah. Uh, and Indiana, that, that way we got two chances. 
Did Indiana get to the semifinals last year? <clears throat> I think they did, right? Because they beat Illinois. They beat on Illinois. Friday. Yeah, yes. they played their way into the tournament. Basically. And they lost Iowa. They lost to Iowa in the semis. Then Iowa beat Purdue in the championship. Then Iowa lost the first round against Richmond. Then Indiana beat Wyoming in the first four, and Wyoming was horrible. Richmond. That there's that quad one we were looking for last night. Boom. And I then, was- and then uh, in the first round, Indiana lost to St. Mary's by 29. That's what happened. Uh, so there you go. Uh, all right, Illinois, Penn State tomorrow night, Thursday night, 5.30, Big Ten Network. Illinois comes in 20-11, 11-9 in the Big Ten. They are the eight seed, right? No, seven seed. No, eight, seven. There's seven. seven. Illinois seven. is a seven, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering because there's got to be a couple teams 11-9 and nine that are the eight and nine. Uh, Penn State 19-12, 10-10. If, in the if Big Northwestern would have lost their, their last game, they would have been a nine seed. Instead, they won, and they're a two seed. That's how crazy the Big Ten is. That's good. Besides uh, Purdue winning by three games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Penn State 10 and 10. They're the 10 seed. Big Ten Network. I don't know who's going to do the game. Probably Bardo. Uh, but my first thing here is, will Brad and co. find a way to lose to Penn State for the third time this season? That's the big question going on. I don't on. know. You know, the old, the old wives' tale is it's hard to beat a team three times. Not this team. Um, Yeah, so Illinois, their path to victory is beating three teams that they're to get to the championship, right? Is beating three teams that they're one and six against if it falls chalk. So is it one and six or one and five? I thought it was one and six, but I don't know. Well, they've lost. They split against Penn uh, against Northwestern, and Mm -hmm. then that's two losses to Penn State and Indiana. That's four. That's true. Do you count Maryland? Is there a chance they play Maryland? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Maryland's going to win it all. So okay, uh, yeah, I think Penn State absolutely needs this game to have a chance to get into the tournament. I think they might need another one after this. So Penn State is not going to be not trying, especially because there's a lot of old seniors on this team. Like their senior day against Maryland, where they won at the buzzer, was like they had like twenty Everybody. seniors. <laughs> yeah, uh, because you have Pickett, you have Lundy. You have uh, Funk and Winter and Dread. That's five seniors right there. So we'll see. Could be the last game of the career for a lot of these guys if they lose this game. So yeah. you got to think they're going to come out firing. I wonder how they shoot from three on a neutral court. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not really worried about you know Pickett going off like he did from three the last game, but who knows? Who knows? They played three neutral site games this year. Uh, they shot 40% from three against Furman. They shot 36% against Virginia Tech. And then they shot 32% against Colorado State. Two and one neutral court this year. So uh, maybe they'll shoot like the Chicago Bulls do in this game, which is not well. Um, who knows? Yeah. But they're coming into this game off of a thrilling emotional victory on Sunday. Maybe they'll come out the gates a little slow, but you essentially have Penn State, who is uh, ranked seventh in three-point percentage in the country against Illinois, who is 336. <laughs> so, who shoots more, though? Great great question. I'm going to find <laughs> that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, you look at that. Underwood said yesterday, he said, quote, now you are in one, one and go home. If you don't play well, obviously Penn State is a team that has been great all year. If Zach wasn't the MVP our, of our league, Pickett would be. So we know that Brad was not the one that voted against. Yeah, I don't know why people were saying that. Um, they have shot 54% in two games against us, and we are a better defensive team than that. So uh, I time to prove how good they are at defense, I guess, because Penn State has tore them apart. Illinois is 40th in the country in three-point attempts per game. I can't find Penn State. Just know that – oh, Penn State's eighth. So okay, Penn State takes three more attempts per game, yeah. and they're still I mean, know, the way la- better. The last game was – Illinois was 7 of 27, and Penn State was 12 of 28. So Sick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a 7% difference between the two. Like Penn State, I think is 38%, Illinois is 31%. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, 
Yeah. But uh, it, somebody asked Brad about the press also, and he said that, the, quote, uh, the press will be a staple of how far we move forward this year. So apparently he's going to start pressing a little bit more. Saw it a little bit at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Had, had absolutely zero effect. Completely went away from it. I think when you, I think that, I think the only time you press is when you have sincere tie. And tie. Yeah. yeah, tie and sincere. In. So it worked against UCLA. That did help them get back in the game. Sincere Harris. Yeah. Doing things and then Terrence Shannon going like 100 for 100 from three. What's up, Steve? How are you doing today? Uh, then you got this Epps thing here. Uh, yeah, uh, Underwood said Epps entered concussion protocol yesterday, um, and everything, once you get into that, everything's based on what you did the day before and if you've improved. So I'm guessing Epps is – I mean, if he comes back, it's it's at the NCAA tournament. He's. I don't think he'll be back for the Big Ten tournament. Um, he is traveling with the team, so I guess maybe it depends on how far they go. But I, I don't see him playing in the Big Ten tournament. I don't. I think you rest him regardless. I don't think you risk him in the Big Ten tournament, personally. And you certainly don't start RJ Melendez, but I know they will. Hundred uh, percent starting RJ Melendez. Yeah, that's so stupid. Um, yeah, metrics. I don't really think we need to go too much into this. Uh, pretty much, Illinois needs to not miss as many threes, and they need Penn State to miss some threes. Uh, Illinois 64th in adjusted offense. Penn State's 28th. Or, uh, nope, that, that's not right. Uh, Penn <laughs> State's 17th. And then adjusted defense, Illinois 28th. And Penn State's 123rd. And uh, Penn State's offensive metric across the board, really good. 11th in effective field goal percentage. 5th in turnover percentage. 7th in three-point percentage. Uh, uh, 46th in two-point percentage. Like I said, steal percentage. Teams don't get, get steals against them often. And then three point attempts versus field goal attempts, uh, 48.2, whatever that number is supposed to mean. Uh, they're second or fifth in the country in that. So they're, they're good on offense, and Illinois is not. Yeah. Uh, Steve says, I think it's great. We have to go through teams that kicked our ass to win the tourney. Fitting. I mean, the thing, like Illinois had had revenge week and they couldn't do anything. <laughs> that's, a, that's what bothers me, I guess. So. Well, they're playing five games in five days, according to Brad. That's true. I, I think they played. They might have played eight games in five days. We just didn't see them all. It's true. So, um, but, yeah, but yeah, they were. You know, they had Penn State, Indiana. Um, you know that little revenge time there. They lost both of them. Played played well in the Indiana game though. They weren't that bad in the Penn State game either. It's just Jalen Pickett made it. Jalen Pickett scored forty one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Got to find a way to stop Jalen Pickett. Yeah, uh, and if I'm Shrewsbury, I'm going to say, hey, per source, Brad Underwood didn't vote you on the team. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So You're not wrong. Even though I guarantee you it was Chris Collins or Kevin Willard, but whatever, uh, trying to get their guys on there. So I don't know why Brad would do that unless he's, unless he's trolling. Uh, players to watch. Uh, I'm going to go with Matthew Meyer. I, Matthew Meyer's got to not go one of ten. One of twelve, I, he need, he needs to go like four of ten, please. Um, Illinois wins, I think, if he shoots forty percent from three. Um, and then I went with Andrew Funk. Uh, Pickett's, of course, going to get his. Um, you got to you got to stop the guys around him. And there's it's more than just Funk. It's Lundy. It's Miles Dread. I mean, they they can all shoot. But Andrew Funk went six and nine in that first game against Illinois. Uh, he only had two in the second game but they didn't really need him as much because Pickett was literally making everything. So, uh, yeah, Matt, it, it's going to come down to three-point shooting, and Matthew Meyer has to be March. Mr. – I think he called himself Mr. March or something in that interview. <clears throat> something silly. Interesting. So, Well, if we look at the games, Illinois played two games in March, and uh, <laughs> he is five for 21 from three. Yeah, twenty. That's forty percent, right? Forty points though, in two games. Yeah, thirteen rebounds. I just like, I, like even on that lat on that play that we were talking about, or I was talking about, um, that that was supposed to be a post up for Matthew Meyer, which I thought was weird. Um, I assume it was going to be an ISO for Matthew Meyer, 
but I I just wish they would they would continue to run the offense and cut in those situations. I know that you want to get a shot up, but Coleman Hawkins dribbled for twenty seconds instead. So I don't know. Just yep. more well, more team offense down the stretch, please. Yeah, you're really hoping for something that's not going to happen. Oh, it's uh, never going to happen. But I just wish it would. <laughs> exactly what I just said. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going Terrence Shannon. I think you need Terrence Shannon to play the way that he did in the at least the first neutral site game that they played this year against UCLA. It wasn't great against Virginia, but uh, I and then I'm going to take Pickett because I want to see if we can get 50. Like that's we're on 50 watch for Pickett. <laughs> 50 watch. What do you think? What do you think Illinois has to hold Pickett under to win this game? 35. I'm going to say 25. He only had 20 in the first game, right? But it was almost so. triple-double or something. Only only scored 59 in that game, too, so it really didn't matter. I also think Jalen Pickett is one of the best, if not the best, guards in the conference, and some people didn't have him as an All-American, which I think is insane because at what point do you think about – if you're going to think about team success, nobody thought Penn State would be – in a position to possibly get into the tournament. So why are we like, well, give me Tyler Kolick, which he's a great player and probably is an all American, but actually nobody expected Marquette to win the league. Never mind. That is a stupid comparison, but Pickett is an all American. That's what it comes yeah. down to. Uh, predictions. All right. Predictions. Definitely not falling into a trap here. I mean, I told you before we started, you, you, you pick Illinois to win because you want to keep seeing them play. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see Illinois play. I saw somebody put out an over under of how many games will Illinois have the rest of the year. <clears throat> and he put it at two and two and a half. Some somebody else said four would be a good number. Um I I don't know if I don't know if we'll hit either of those, but here we go. Uh I got Illinois one in this game, 78, 71. Uh revenge game. Tough to beat a team three times. Give me that, you know, old saying from nineteen eighty two. Yep. I'm going to take Illinois to win 75 72. Uh, why not? What the hell? I don't know. Why not? They're going to be down 72 70, and then they're going to magically have like a, like a Meyer drive to the rim, left hand scores, makes ties it. Penn State comes down, miraculously misses a three. And then at the end, it's like a Terrence Shannon and one at the rim somehow. And then is Illinois, over. will Illinois be down double digits at halftime? Yes. Okay. It'll be 42 32 and a half. <laughs> okay. And then Illinois is going to have to score 43 points in the second half and hold Penn State to 20. Good luck. But that, that wasn't good math. Holding the 30. Good, so, good. yeah. Uh, Steve's got 73 71 Illini. See, it's a 61, but okay. 73 um, 61 Illini. Yeah, I don't think Penn State's going to score 61 points. <laughs> I think they'll score a little bit more, but who knows? Penn State, if Penn State's cold, Illinois wins easy, but they haven't been cold against Illinois. At all. Illinois held Rutgers under 60 points in the first game of the Big Ten tournament two years ago. That's good. So they got a track record here with one player from that team still here. Uh, anyway, all right. <laughs> oh. uh, so on. let me put this up. Yeah, so a lot of people have come into the chat over the years saying like uh put the game on show the game yeah and and now we're gonna try to do that for tomorrow uh we have a thing set up here i'm just gonna put this in the chat check that link out i hope the link works i don't know if it will if you're actually on youtube if that pops up as a link if it doesn't just you know copy and paste it into the into the thing but so we're gonna try tomorrow night's game against Penn State to do it on playback TV. And all you have to do is go to the link, sign up, put your TV provider in there, bada bing, bada boom, you can watch the game with us. And I hope that the people that watch us on YouTube for the watch party or on Twitter or on Facebook can get this figured out and get on there uh, because – the environment during the game itself, during the watch party, wouldn't be the same if it's just, I mean, it would still be. Us and two people. Yeah. So 
you know, we we did one last night. Yeah. Uh, and, against... and this this site, it ta- like and a lot of people cut the cord now. Whatever it takes, YouTube TV, it does Fubu, Fubo, whatever it's called, right? Hulu, um, yeah. Hulu, it does it does all those. So all you do, you, you go to the site, and you literally you can watch the game with us. It'll be on the screen. Our ugly faces will be on the screen, and you'll watch it with us. So yeah. So we only have eight members in here right now. I started this yesterday. Uh, I'm going to be doing this probably all year round with different stuff. But for the Illini games, we're going to try it here. See, 5.30 tomorrow, the feed will be streamed to my page. I'm going to post it all over the place on the Twitter and the Facebook. Uh, and you just you just find my page. You'll become a member instantly. Um, and if you want to see maybe what it looks like from last night, I mean, you can move our us all over the screen if you want. We don't have to be on the screen in a certain spot. Yeah, you can even you, mute us. Yeah, you can change the, the volume. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so – just give you an idea. We did Gonzaga St. Mary's, and it just it kind of looked uh, like this. You could see us here. You can see the chat over here, uh, but the chat is actually on the right side when you're actually watching the game. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of customizability with it. Uh, I think it's a it's a good way to you know a good time to try it for us. Yeah. Given that it's the Big Ten tournament, um, I still think next season we'll have some normal watch parties. And probably some of these as well. Maybe games that we're not doing watch parties for full on. We'll just do it on there. So it's something to uh, to try out. You watch the game with us instead of having to watch us watch the game <laughs> and trying to sync up your TV. We'll all be synced up. Now, if you're actually watching on cable, you might be a few seconds ahead. Yeah. There wasn't that big of a delay last night when I was checking yeah. um, between the two. So I hope everybody signs up on there. Uh, it's easy. You just got to go to playback. You can just go to playback.tv and make an account, connect your TV provider. You can connect, uh, you know, if you have NBA league pass or MLB TV, connect to that too on there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a fun little thing to try for the Illini game. Uh, we'll also be doing something on Friday on there with a bunch of different games when we bounce around. So those links will be posted as well on social media. So like if you're at work during the day on Friday, you could just pop this up on your phone. Yeah. And I think it's an easier way to stream or on your second monitor. Yeah. You know. And you also have uh, the playback. There's a beta app on the iPhone. So you just got to find a way to, there's a link. On they tell website. you how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. I'm a little concerned that nobody in the chat is responding about any of this, <laughs> uh, but I'm just, I'm trying to get it through everybody's head to try this out. And the people that normally watch the watch parties, join us tomorrow night for the game, 5.30. We'll be live a little bit before the game, getting ready, watching the game. We're all going to watch together. If people want to come up on stage and talk with us during commercial breaks or parts of the game or post-game, we can do that. It's kind of like a Twitter spaces. You could do that in that way. Uh, so I hope everybody tunes into that uh, tomorrow night, 5.30, and Friday, and maybe even Saturday and Sunday. I'll be I'll be getting on on there um to uh to do that and crypto if you can't figure it out message one of us or message the account or any way you can find us on twitter or whatever you have and we'll try to help you out and get that figured out uh imbrot has got logged in that's good so yeah it's just uh it's a different thing we're gonna try i hope people tune in um like i said we're not completely done doing the normal watch party style that we've been doing which is watching us watch the game and uh, and I think that that'll be a good way to uh, to try this out with this game. So you just go to my page, and it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be on there. I see two two more people are now members. I got you guys on here. I see it now, Quackle and Imbrots. So you, you got logged in there. So tomorrow night we will be live on there, uh, 5:30 p.m. Tip. We'll be live a little bit before then. Hopefully the feed is up. And maybe after the game, we'll uh, hit up another game just to watch another game for a little bit after on there because I could switch between games uh, during that stream. So I hope everybody can get logged in. Like I said, I'm going to promote this a lot on our social medias over the next few days. Um, that should be a big thing in March for me. I think I'll probably do this during some of the big NCAA tournament games as well. Uh, on here so there's a lot of good you know different streams on here as well um so who knows who knows what the possibilities are with this 
and uh, moving forward um, with the watch parties and trying this and, and who knows how far we can take it. Uh, but for the Atlanta game tomorrow, definitely going to happen. Then we'll see what happens Friday. I'll be on there Friday. Like I said, we'll both be on there Friday doing some different things, looking at, uh, looking at some games for Friday. There's plenty of games on Friday. You got the early big 10 window. You got, uh, early SEC window, early Big 12. You got all that stuff on Thursday or on Friday. So we'll be on there Friday as well. And uh, yeah, playback.tv. If you want to slash it and go straight to my thing, it's Ethan Carter SW. I posted it in the chat. I'll post it again here just to make sure that everybody, that if anybody, we just got a few more viewers. So if anybody tunes in and uh, gets that going, we will uh, make it happen on there and uh, hope to see everybody in there tomorrow. Um, it should be a good time to try it out. We had uh, we had Gonzaga St. Mary's last night. It was a blowout, but it was a good little thing to try last night and, and, uh, and uh, you know, watch a blowout. And we switched between a couple games during just to not have to watch the beat down the entire time. And uh, hopefully it's not that way with the Illini game tomorrow. Hopefully they can, uh, they can keep it close, keep things in check, but uh, yeah, we will see everybody on playback TV. If you have any problems with it? Let us know, message us. We'll help try to help you out, get on there. Uh, but yeah, playback.tv slash Ethan Carter SW link is in the chat. Link is on Twitter. I've posted on Twitter a couple of times with both the accounts. So we will see everybody uh, tomorrow night for the game and moving forward. And uh, everybody have a good day. And we'll see you next time for the Illini Basketball Podcast. Episode 154 will be after the Penn State game at some point, and we'll see you tomorrow night during the game on playback.tv.